Hello and welcome. Uh, during this session we're going to look at um, how performance ready you are. Uh, we're going to take a, a bit of a look into your lifestyle choices regarding physical activity um, and diet and try and give you some top tips to help you stay um, fresh and on top of your game when preparing for your exams. So physical activity impacts the brain in multiple different ways. Um, it boosts your memory, improves concentration levels, helps to reduce stress and also improves your attention span. Okay, so physical, physically active students have more active brains. Okay, so as a result of exercise, your brain functions um, much better. So anytime um, you want to do any revision, um, right after doing some exercise or physical activity, might be a great time to think about doing it. So if you look here at, um, this is a, a brain scan of students taking um, a different test. So physically active students become, have more active brains. So there's two different, images here so after 20 minutes of sitting quietly and after 20 minutes of walking now it's clear to see that the red areas are very active blue areas are least active so that that student who um, went out for a 20 minute walk prior to sitting down and taking the test and um, had a much more active brain as a result of physical activity so remember physical activity is not just um, it's not exercise it's not a full-on Joe Wicks workout and um, it can be something as simple as 20 minutes of walking so what exercise do you currently do on a weekly basis? This is a good opportunity for you to sit and reflect and consider actually what constitutes physical activity. How often are you active? Because it's quite easy to go through your week and rely on lifts from parents um, and perhaps sitting down for long periods of time revising or maybe going to lessons and being sat down most of the day. Um, so how can you build exercise into your daily life? So exercise, the recommended daily amount of exercise is 60 minutes per day, but it doesn't have to be 60 minutes straight out. It can be built into various different chunks. So if you live in the village, is it possible for you to walk to school in the morning? Okay, because that 15 to 20 minutes of exercise could be one opportunity for you to get physically active without really adjusting your lifestyle too much. And the same goes for walking home as well. Um, what about nutrition and stress and stress and how does um, your diet um, support you in, in, in being more healthy and more prepared um, for revision activities and studying? So somebody with a healthy balanced diet is less likely to be stressed. So um, in the graph, the graph here shows um, a variety of different um, foods that we eat on a daily basis. So there's two different lines, there's the red line and the green line. Now you'll notice that the red line um, represents lots of foods that are really high in sugars and what we call um, high glycemic index foods versus low glycemic index foods. So the graph shows up on the left hand side blood glucose levels versus time uh, in hours and that's time in terms of the time that they provide energy for. Now what you'll see um, in comparison um, the two different foods is some really unhealthy foods or foods that are high in sugar um, or, or simple sugars and there's also foods that are high a bit more what they call complex carbohydrates that are really high um, in energy that's low uh, that has a low glycemic index if a food has a low glycemic index it produces energy over long periods of time okay so with the energy that you get from that food is then sustained so if you think about preparing for school in the morning um, and having your um, and so you have your breakfast. If you have a slice of white toast, for example, um, that's considered um, a high glycemic index food. And what it'll do is it'll provide you some energy, but it'll only provide you short, um, a short amount of energy for a short period of time. So what happens is that when, you, when you've when you ate your slice of toast, um, an hour later, or within an hour, your energy levels will, will have burnt through you'll have burnt through the energy that the toast is provided and then you'll crash and you'll feel hungry so then you'll snack you may go to break time and, and, and eat um, a chocolate bar or an unhealthy snack um, like a cake or a biscuit okay and then again you'll provide yourself with another um, burst of energy that might last another hour and you may go through that throughout the day multiple times a packet of crisps is, is an obvious snack that people will, will tend to go to now, the difference is if you can have um, a more healthier breakfast, then actually you could sustain um, that energy level right the way through till lunch, and then you'll have another meal at lunchtime, and then that'll sustain you right the way through to your evening meal. And a more balanced diet then therefore reduces the amount of times that you crash um, after eating um, food with a high glycemic index. So these foods um, give you energy spikes, okay, and then cause you to crash at the end which is what we want to try and avoid really 
um, and these foods will give you that sustained energy over a long period of time. Um, outlets like McDonald's, are, are, you know, you're, they're on your doorstep and they're really easy to access food sources very quickly. Okay, and they're very tempting as well, especially after you, you've had a long day. Okay, but these are a really big no-no. Okay, these are not only high in glycemic index, but um, they have a high glycemic index, but they also have a really high level of sugar um, and also saturated fat, which is going to um, lead to increased weight gain if you're not physically active. Now, um, another thing, so um, think about monster energy drinks, okay? Um, they are also a big no-no, okay? Because the blood sugar and energy levels should be slow and steady and not swinging wildly up and down. Now, monster, cans of monster have really high levels of energy and they provide you with caffeine and they provide you with a real short burst of energy that you feel that you might feel will put you in a good mood to study okay now if you look at the the graph along the top and um, this represents um, sugar and insulin levels where there's um, where they're swinging wildly up and down okay um, now the green um, line along the middle represents what your normal blood sugar level should be so um, if you look at the graph at the bottom um, across the day you should try to maintain your blood sugar level within that that uh, range now if you eat foods that are real really high in sugar have that high glycemic index then um, your body will counter that by producing more insulin um, in order to counteract it and what happens is as you as you as you spike um, you, you drop afterwards when your blood, blood blood sugar levels drop and it causes you to be hungry now if you can sustain um, a relatively um, moderate blood sugar level by eating um, more foods that, are that have a low glycemic index you're much like much more likely to be able to sustain your performance throughout the day right the way through until the evening um, water um, is another huge factor and um, that, that should be consumed on a regular basis um, because it will help maintain a healthy diet so energy boosting foods can include anything from carbohydrates proteins and fats okay but you must be very careful what types of carbohydrates proteins and fats that you try to consume so some of the examples on the list here um, are good sources um, magnesium is involved in over 1000 different enzymatic reactions in your body it's vitally important in providing your cells with energy so um, good sources of magnesium include your vegetables nuts fish um, and bananas um, and then up the bees so B vitamins are directly involved in creating energy at a cellular level and will give you an energy boost so all of the foods there um, are good um, sources so you could potentially have um, maybe some um, fruit and yogurt with some nuts for your breakfast uh, maybe have um, a um, a brown a sandwich on brown bread for your lunch, or maybe some sort of um, healthy alternative with um, some vegetables mixed in there as well. And then following that, in your evening meal, you could have um, some form of pasta or, or rice or some meat products in there as well. But again, a balanced meal. Um, so dehydration causes headaches, tiredness, and can hinder your mental performance at school okay so um, eating a nutritious breakfast can also help you perform in exams and during the day so um, some more examples we discussed the fruit and nut um, alternative there as well so eating the right food and, and drinking and drink can energize your system improve your alertness and sustain throughout the long exam hours so foods like this are help are going to help prepare your body and prevent you from um, going into that um, that rapid drop in glucose levels during an exam you want to be able to eat a breakfast that's going to be able to sustain throughout a two hour exam or a three hour exam in some cases um, and allow you to still have energy at the end of it okay what you don't want to be doing is having a rapid decline in glucose levels right in the middle of an exam because think about the fatigue that's going to set in as a result of that and the quality of your written responses that will follow um, smoothies are a really good way um, to you know if you can't stomach breakfast in the morning or you're short of time then if you can get um, you know a range of different f um, fruits and some oats um, and some fat free yogurt um, a cup of water and some almond milk you can make yourself a lovely smoothie which would be really good to have quick and on the go um, so one of the best ways to maximize focus is, is hydration now we keep talking about hydration and the importance of it Okay, but if you 
Um, if you're dehydrated, you can become tired, you get headaches, you reduce your alertness, uh, and you lose your concentration levels. And again, um, not just in exams, but when you're trying to prepare, doing revision in the evenings after you've had a long day at school, drinking water and staying hydrated is going to be really important in maximising your productivity and improving your concentration levels. Do you ever find yourself hungry and hunting for a quick snack? So alternatives to crisps and chocolate bars or, or any sugary foods that are going to cause that crash in energy levels. Um, you could use a little um, 50 gram portion of nuts um, and raisins. They'll be really healthy and they're going to provide you with um, or you can have, sorry, 30 grams is your daily intake. They're going to provide you with sustained energy throughout the day. Okay, so in summary, um, if you can exercise for 30 minutes, okay, try and build it into your lifestyle because it will make it easier and less of a burden, more easy to achieve. Um, avoid foods that are high in sugar for short bursts of energy. Eat, try and eat a balance of carbohydrates, proteins and healthy fats throughout the day. Um, make sure you, hit, you eat breakfast, um, healthy snacks to maintain your energy levels and drink water to help you stay hydrated. Um, if you take this into consideration uh, and have a good revision timetable and a good balance of um, study then um, that surely is a recipe for a good performance in exams.